Good evening, everyone. I don't know which is your time zone, but in Kiev, Ukraine, we have now 6 p.m. And uh, this is our first live broadcast in this year, in 2021. I hope that uh, you enjoyed your holidays, your Christmas time, your New Year Eve, and uh, you are in good mood, in uh, good health, and everything we had bad in 2020 will be left in 2020, but a good experience from very interesting period of our lives that happened in last year will be transformed and yeah, actually transformed to the, to, to, to the new year and we will benefit from the new experience that we have and we will be stronger and we will be able to know how to overcome all these circumstances, uh, negative circumstances and uh, actually uh, everything will be all right next year. So here, here we have our dental talks, our um, program that we are running from time to time on YouTube channel and on Facebook that is dedicated to your live questions and answers. So basically if you have any questions about dentistry, doesn't matter which topic, direct restorations, indirect, endodontics, or whatever, feel free to ask and I will be happy, I will be more than happy to reply all your questions that you have in your mind related to our beautiful profession about dentistry. And together we will be able to become better and better uh, every time. I don't know if we have uh, something wrong on the uh, YouTube chat because I cannot see comments. Uh, maybe it's something blocked on the on the program. Let me just reload the page because it's almost 40 people watching us now live on on face on on YouTube, and we have also about 40 people watching us live in in uh, Facebook. But I cannot read comments. I cannot read comments. So let me just uh, let me just reload comments and ask my team if comments are allowed, if comments are allowed on the YouTube channel or not. Комментарии у нас включены или на этом, на YouTube? Or no? Oh yeah, we have somebody writing. So guys, if you can see me and you can hear me, just type me something because I think, think that we have some technical issues. Just feel free to say hello or whatever and I will be able to understand if, if, if uh, the device is working, working well or not. Okay, so, since we're waiting for, yeah, I'm just have an honor to listen to you. Yeah, fine, great, now we fixed comments. So now you, can, you, you, you are able to write questions. Now you are able to write questions because something went wrong at the very beginning. And uh, I hope that now we will be able to answer your questions with a very, very, um, detailed explanations. Uh, how many people we have here? From which country you are, by the way? It's all, all, always interesting to communicate to people online, but live communication is way better for sure. But it's interesting for me, where are you from? Just write down here, where are you from? I would like to, uh, to see which countries are you from? Okay, so we have first dental question here from Dr. Summer. Hey, Maxime, want to know when you go to etch and rinse and when you go to self-etch? This is the question that is related to adhesive dentistry, to bonding. Uh, basically, I prefer, I don't know why, to be honest, maybe because of my experience and I started with uh, edge and rinse bonding systems, so I feel myself more confident with edge and rinse system. And in my daily basis, I use fourth generation of adhesive systems, which is edge, prime, and rinse. Okay, so everything is separate. But uh, what I would like to say is that when you have um, total edge adhesive systems, they, there are several procedural mistakes that can occur. For example, over etching or 
over drying after you etch. So basically, if you would like to be more confident in that field and you would like to combine different adhesive systems in your daily basis, I would recommend uh, to use total etch system if you do not have a lot dentin exposed. But if you have severe dentin exposure, it is more predictable, I think, uh, to use self-edge because it is difficult to control moisture on dentin if the area of dentin is exposed dramatically. So you know that the total edge systems, they are very sensitive to wet uh, procedure. The dentin has to be wet. And the problem is that nowadays still not many people know exactly how wet is wet. So when you work with self-edge, you are not uh, actually scared to over dry dentin. You can do that. But also we can, we have now pretty interesting generation of adhesive systems, which is universal ones. So basically you can use these universal systems as total edge or selective edge or completely self edge. So basically using that systems, you may avoid a lot of, a lot of procedural, uh, procedural mistakes. Okay, so this is my answer. But personally, I prefer to use fourth generation etching, priming, and bonding, that kind of systems. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now we have principle, preparation, and overlay. So there is a question about overlay uh, preparation. Overlay preparation. Okay, let me answer this question in brief. But before I will answer that question about uh, overlay preparation, I would like to say that in our YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, you can easy, easily find a very interesting and didactic webinar, di de detailed webinar about overlay preparation. Just let me show you. When you go to our YouTube channel, which is Belgrade Academy YouTube channel. Uh, what you can see here, you go to videos. Here is the folder videos. Okay. And when you go to video folder, you will be able to see the list of videos available for watching. And here you can see uh, our webinar about onlays about onlays. So you go to videos and here is onlays, basic principles, which is about, uh, let me just keep this ad. Yeah, so it is about 15 minutes, 15 minutes of interesting content, useful content. Despite the fact that, that despite the fact that this uh, online webinar actually is free. We put a lot of useful information there. Personally, I don't like to attend free webinars because there are a lot of water and useless information. But I can say that our free uh, programs, free masterclasses, free webinars are full of interesting tips and tricks that really can help you in your daily basis. Okay, so regarding overlay preparations, I cannot just give you a really brief, re um, brief answer here because we have to understand many aspects of preparations. First of all, you have to respect general rules and general principles of preparations. You have to understand what type of overlays you are, you're going to provide. Will it be bondable or bonded overlay or you will be using, for example, golden one? because there are differences between retentive types of preparations and preparations that are related to bonding process. Then you have to understand also uh, requests and recommendations from manufacturer of material that you are going to use for your overlay. Ceramic, glass ceramic, lithium disilicate ceramic, or composite, or maybe zirconium, or whatever. So this is what you have to what you have to uh, understand and to respect. And when you go for overlay preparation, these are the case when you have to make cusp reduction and cusp coverage. So also you have to understand in which case you have to do cusp reduction and cusp coverage and how far you have to cut your cusps 
until what point. So just to make it simple, when we have to do cusp reductions uh, and cusp coverage, we have we divide cases into two groups, easy case and difficult case. The easy case is, one, is the one when you have uh, patients with vital teeth and with normal occlusion and with no cracks. So in this case, uh, the decision to do overlay preparation would be directed by the size of defect. If I have carious defect, that destroyed tooth and we have thin walls thinner than two millimeters thinner than two millimeters in this case I would do cusp reduction and cusp coverage the second group is more difficult one when you are dealing with non vital cases when you're dealing with uh, crack lines for example or crack tooth syndrome case and when you are dealing with a specific occlusal cases with bruxists with clenchers or whatever. In this case, the minimum thickness of the walls that I can keep without coverage, but not in case of crack tooth syndrome, which is important. So the minimum thickness of the walls that I will keep uncovered can be about three millimeters. If less, I will do cusp reduction and cusp coverage. The rest preparation is pretty simple because since we start to use uh, bonded restorations, uh, our preparations for onlays and overlays and inlays became defect oriented. The only thing that we have to do is to make the div slight divergency of the walls to provide very easy pathway of insertion for that type of restoration and we have to open into proximal box to have easy impression easy fabrication, easy isolation and easy bonding process of your partial um, posterior ceramic or composite restoration. You can find more information on our free webinar but if you would like to see every single step by, your si by yourself with multiple cameras you can attend our online masterclass because we also have online masterclass about that topic which you can find on our webpage if you go to online.belgrad.com, uh, then you will select English version. You will be able to see and to find here ceramic inlays, overlays and veneer lays prep designs, which is about two and a half hours online masterclass, which is different from webinar because during online masterclass, actually is demonstration. I'm showing you everything from the microscope and from different cameras. So basically with that type of education you can feel that you are staying with me in my training center and you're able to see over shoulder process of all this stuff and preparations. Okay, so next question. Now we have a lot of questions. I think that, that something went wrong with, uh, from the very beginning of our live broadcast. But anyways, it, it is solved now and you can ask me any question you want. So let's go. Um, another question is, you see we have people from Egypt, from Germany, from Iraq, from Plymouth. Nice. Uh, can I ask about Fetty, Fetty Shaker? The question from Fetty Shaker. Can I ask about available option for non retentive indirect prep temporization? Yeah, for sure. Uh, let me reply this question because there are many tips and tricks about non retentive uh, temporary restorations, for example, like veneers or tabletop restorations, or veneer lays preparations, or occlusal veneers, or whatever. So there are many clinical tips, by the way, and, but the, the main idea uh, to stabilize your non-retentive, indirect, temporary restoration is to provide so-called spot bonding procedure. In few words, you do spot etching, spot bonding and then you will have your uh, sorry and then you will have your uh, temporary restoration partially bonded to the tooth 
surface. That process works with veneers when you have several teeth prep for veneers and since we have proper preparation for veneers which is three planes preparations you may have some undercuts you may have some black triangles you may have some uh, retention in between teeth so basically the process of temporary veneer restoration uh, looks like you do self etching, so uh, they, uh, sli uh, spot etching, spot bonding, and then you fill your silicon index with your tamp material, and then you go and you keep it in patient's mouth. So once you remove your silicon index, then the material stays in patient's mouth. So you just remove excess polish, and then your patient go home. In case when we do something in posterior teeth, the pathway of insertion for posterior restorations is more vertical so basically you can remove your provisional restoration so you do your temp you remove it you clean it then you you go for spot etching spot bonding and then you go with your flowable composite and you partially bond your temporary restoration to sound to structure with that technique but be careful because there are many different small small detailed tips that you have to learn for example, when you have undercuts there, or you have filling there, or you have immediate dentin sealing there. So you have to be very careful in order not to bond your restoration to the IDS zone. Otherwise, you will have, uh, it will be your nightmare, by the way, next appointment, when you will have to bond your final restoration and you are not able to remove your provisional restoration guys if you want to know more about that we have also very detailed online masterclass about provisional restorations yet yeah, that you can find on our web page when you will go to our on online.belogradio.com and you will find temporary restorations veneers crowns and onlays available for watching with 14 days access you will find a lot of tips and tricks believe me we got a lot of positive feedbacks out of our master classes by the way if we have somebody watching us now here on youtube or on facebook that attend who attended our previous uh previous online master classes just write down your opinion about our online master classes just to share with other people um okay let's go to another question uh, the question is, I wonder how do you achieve a correct inversion of the rubinum in proximal very deep cavities? Okay, how to provide inversion of the rubinum in deep cavities? Um, I can say that it is not possible in every single case to receive, to achieve uh, inversion, okay? so. If it is super deep, super deep means like five millimeters below the gum, for example, okay, which is difficult. So in such a cases, you may find or you may use um, combined isolation like split dam or midi dam technique with Teflon tape, with retraction cord, uh, something like that. But if you have moderate uh, subgingival defect, uh, like for example two three millimeters you may use active rubidium clamp the active rubidium clamp forces and pushes uh, gingiva down so it creates pretty aggressive retraction of soft tissues and then you may retract uh, you may invert your rubidium with floss and pack sometimes uh, this inverted rubidium with with Teflon. This is also a, 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 a good possibility to do that kind of rubidium isolation. Okay, uh, we do also have some questions from our Facebook, so let me just read about that question and then uh, we continue. So the question from Bernanda Mrak, what do you think about immediate dentin sealing? Um, I'm pretty, pretty fine with immediate dentin sealing. In my, in my practice, I do use immediate dentin sealing, especially in cases when we have severe dentin exposure. So I'm not against 
that technique because I, I know that some profess professionals are not following or they actually against of immediate dentin sinning. Nothing wrong with this technique. It gives you a lot of positive moments, a lot of benefits. If you want to, to, to know more about immediate dentin sealing, we have interview with, with the founder of immediate dentin sealing, creator Pascal Manier. You can go to our YouTube channel again. Let me just show you. You go to our YouTube channel. You go to uh, videos. So here, videos. Scroll down and uh, here is Pascal Mania talk with the living legend. So this one is about IDS. Then I made also a free webinar with us with a clinical explanation about IDS, immediate dentin ceiling. So it's available for free on our YouTube. Anytime you want, you can actually you can see and uh, get information about that topic. Okay, another uh, another question from Facebook, Jordan Kirchev. We know that zirconium can be etched with hydrofluoric acid, and therefore can be actually adhesively cemented. So, what cement do you use for cementing zirconium restoration? It is true that we cannot etch. Clinically, let's say clinically, we cannot add zirconium with hydrofluoric acid. Be why I'm saying clinically? Because we can. I mean, people can. Uh, there are researches with high concentration of hydrofluoric acid with uh, long exposure, which is not clinical acceptable. But anyways, we are talking about real dentistry. Uh, we know when we etch glass ceramic with hydrofluoric acid, we create poros. So actually this will help to get some micro-mechanical retention. But also for glass ceramic we use silane. And silane gives us chemical bonding to glass particles and to monomers. So we have both micro-mechanical and chemical bonding to glass ceramic. Regarding Regarding zirconia, we can achieve bonding to zirconia and we have now prove, proves in literature and in research that you can reach uh, bonding, chemical bonding to zirconia using phosphate primers that gives you chemical adhesion to zirconium and phosphate groups there. There is a very interesting approach by uh, Marcus Blatz. You can Google Marcus Blatz and his concept, which is APC concept, air abrasion, uh, priming, and cement, composite cement. So basically you do sandblasting of zirconium, then you apply uh, phosphate primer or MDP monomer contained primer, and then you can use your resin cement to bond your zirconia. It works. So now we have possibility not just to cement zirconium but also to bond to zirconium. Okay, let's go to our uh, YouTube questions. Let us see. Uh, another question is, as an endodontist, would you recommend using microscope apex locator rotary as a start. As an endodontist, would you recommend using microscope, apex locator and rotary? For sure. <laughs> if you would like to do endodontic treatments in proper way, you have to use everything that you mentioned. Microscope, apex locator, rotary file systems, irrigation, proper protocols and so on and so on. You have to. Uh, another question is, I'm a dental student and I haven't been introduced to mock-ups yet. Can you explain what it is and what it is used for? Uh, 
Yeah, for sure. In a very short, their very short explanation, the mock-up is a test drive of your patient's smile. For example, when you have patient for veneer case, for example, and patient wants to improve smile, to change shape, color, or whatever. So what we can do, we can plan the case, we can share this information with our dental technician, and dental technician can do wax up or can do digital uh, project of our patient's future smile. And out of dental technician workflow, we receive wax up model or we can receive printed model. Then we take impressions from wax up model or from printed model, doesn't matter which one, actually the process is the same. We take an impression, we fabricate silicon index, and then we fill the silicon index with uh, provisional material, which is bisacryl, uh, actually, and then we just put the silicon index with bisacryl material into the patient's mouth, remove silicon index, and we can see uh, prototype. We can make a test drive, and this process, this actually uh, procedure is called mock-up. Okay, uh, let's go next. The next question is uh, from Mary. Mary asking me a question. Do you do adhesive protocol before putting matrix system or after that? What are benefits of doing it before placing the matrix? That is actually an interesting question. When we do direct restorations, this is the question. When you do direct composite restoration, class 2, for example, and we have to place matrix. Uh, when it is better to do adhesive protocol before or after? Um, theoretically, it is better to do it before matrix placement because you can efficiently prepare edge and bond peripheral aspect of tooth where composite can be bonded to. But from the practical point of view, it is not always easy to do that approach before you place matrix before because after you decide to place matrix and wedge sometimes you may get bleeding or matrix displacement or uh, will be difficult for you to choose proper matrix system uh, whatever another problem that may be cured when you do bonding before matrix placement is that if you will have pretty thick layer of bonding when you blow the, uh, the bonding out you may get some invisible for you uh, compound of bonding in cervical area and when you light cure it then it will modify the profile of tooth even so you have to be very careful in such a case what I do, I can explain, uh, before doing direct restoration, actually before, yes, before restorative parts, where I have my rubber dam isolation, I removed carrier's defects or whatever, I do try in of matrix and wedge to be sure that this matrix and this wedge will work in that case. And then I can go for bonding and then I place matrix again. So I remove matrix and then I go. But this is in case in easy case because in some cases you have to make an additional adaptation of matrix with Teflon you have to pack your Teflon and in this case you may apply forces and these forces may displace your bonding from some areas so there is no exact practical answer to that question I would do this way in easy case when I can easy choose matrix and wedge without additive uh, stabilization or securing of this matrix I can do bonding before matrix and wedge placement in difficult cases I prefer to place matrix wedge pack teflon put ring or whatever and then I go for bonding protocol in this case thanks for the question by the way it's a very interesting one uh, Georgi Jorginho, 
Dr. Maxim, do you teach different overlay preps in your online course? I have seen lots of colleagues using different prep design. Uh, my friends, this is good from dentistry because we are not limited by any single approach and technique. We have multiple different techniques of preparations, materials, protocols, and so on and so on, and many of them work properly and perfectly. So, um, on my online masterclass, I'm showing, I don't remember exactly, I, sh I think I, I showed three different, or four, three different types of preparations, uh, pretty easy types of preparations, pretty, pretty uh, repeatable ones for different level of dentists. So basically, it's just a matter of uh, watching and, 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 and apply it in the, in, the, in the practice. Okay, but by the way, if you would like to be more, if you would like to be mo even more better in preparations for onlays, overlays, for crowns, for veneers, you are more than welcome to come to our training center for hands-on course because all these online courses are very good. Uh, but the real dentistry is the one that is made by hands, okay? And sometimes you have to have somebody that will teach you not just showing things, but also helping you to move your hands in proper way, to give you guidelines and to guide you actually to the clinical and practical process. So that's why we still have, I mean, we dentists still have practical components during uh, studying in university and we work by our hands all our lives. By the way, the handwork in dentistry is more than 80 and 98 percent of our time. Imagine that. So it's hand handwork. Okay, and next question. Recommendations for repair of composite. Old, let's say, a mouth old or fresh, less than month old. Do you use roughening with burrs or sandblasting, silane, etch, universal adhesives, flowable comp uh, adhesives, whatever. So guys, if you want to repair old composite, the old composite is the one that is more than two days because after two days in most of composite systems, uh, monomer is already converted, so there is no active monomer. So you have to do something to get some adhesion or bonding. And in this case, we rely mainly on uh, micromechanical retention. So for that, we use sandblasting. We do sandblasting with aluminum oxide, 27 or 50 microns. And then, if you use universal adhesive systems that have um, this MDP monomer, you may get some chemical adhesion to uh, old composite. So basically, you can skip silane. So sandblasting, then you use your MDP-contained bonding agent. If you are not using the, this kind of bonding agents, I would say silane that we use for ceramic restoration may help you there. So sandblasting, silane, and then you go with your adhesive, regular adhesive, and then you go with your um, regular composite, flowable or packable, it, it's up to you. Okay, is there any easy way to finding and the orifices as possible? Do we have to cut and remove dentin until we find MB2 or maybe MB3. Um, Adam, um, there is no easy way to find a riff, to be able to, to be honest. Uh, it is learning curve. It is a matter of your knowledge and experience. But I don't like to, to say about this experience and many, many other things because I know that there are many young people, young dentists watching us right now and they don't have experience. So they uh, wait for piece of advice to make their life easier. So what I can say, you have to study and you have to evaluate morphology, 
the easiest way and the fastest way to understand morphology and uh, to understand the design of pulp chamber with orifices is to work on extracted teeth. So just get somewhere, extract the teeth as much as possible and do endo there. Make access, remove dentin, observe and uh, you'll be able to, un to understand morphology in a pretty short way. Then magnification, definitely magnification. Then statistics that we have in endodontics. We have statistics according to additional ad uh, additive uh, root canals and we can expect that there is a root canal and then we may find this root canal following morphological signs of pulp chamber using magnification and also CBCT may help you to understand if you have this MB2 or MB3 or not. So combination of all these informational sources may help you to find uh, these extra or hidden root canals easier. Um, another question from dental student Iki Ada. I'm a dental student in the clinical stage, I have problem that the burr always gets down while preparing the axial wall. That means that if I want a supra gingival finish line, it ends sub gingival. <laughs> it happens sometimes when you have non stable hand. By the way, that's why. Uh, that's why you know when people are asking about. Can you recommend us best burr or can, us, can you recommend us uh, a handpiece or instrument or whatever? I can say that burr and uh, handpiece is just an instrument, but preparation is done by yourself. So you have to train your hands. You have to learn how to prep smoothly, how to position your hands, how to handle handpiece what kind of speed mode and grit of your bird to use. What I can say, start with very supra gingival preparation first during step one, then decrease speed. Use fine grit burr like a red diamond for example and then move your finish line slightly down to the gum level or to keep it supra gingival if it is necessary in that case. Don't force yourself, give yourself more time. But you have to learn how to handle your hands and how to position your hands properly for different kind of teeth. And what I say, can say is that it is easy to learn that because it is not, nothing unique. It is pretty easy. The preparation process is not like uh, making hand, uh, you know, sculpturing of the small things like dental technician does, for example, making wax up or building up of, of ceramic. It is more difficult than preparation. It's just a matter of time and you will be fine, I'm pretty sure. Um, okay. Uh, another question from the same student, how to maximize the control, especially in posterior teeth preparation. Start to work on phantoms, on models. Then when you will go to patients, don't take multiple teeth for preparations. Just take one. Give yourself, give yourself time. For example, if it takes usually or routinely half an hour to prep for crown, for example, I'm just, I don't know how much, how, how much time it takes for you, but let's say half an hour, give yourself one hour, okay, and be precise, don't be in stress, and it will come, after two, three, five, ten, twenty teeth, it will come. Come to our course, I will show you everything, I will help to stabilize your hands, I will give you tips and tricks as much as possible in dentistry in, in very easy and repeatable way so you'll be professional after that hands-on sessions and you'll be able to prep real teeth more in, with more confidence. 
Um, can I use highly filled flowable for indirect posterior cementation and what its limitation? Actually, personally, I do use highly filled flowable composite restorative. Highly filled flowable restorative composite, the one that we can use for direct final restorations. These kind of materials I'm using for bonding of indirect restorations. Many of them are bonded with that kind of materials. The only limit is that if your restoration is thicker, if it is thicker than 1.5 millimeters, if your restoration is thicker than 1.5 millimeters, conversion of monomer after light curing will be not completed, will be not adequate. So in that case, I, I switch to dual cured uh, resin cements. For the rest, I use that kind of highly filled flowable materials. Okay, next question. Uh, Adam, what is the best restorative choice for endotreated lower six with deep subgingival distal margin? It depends. I cannot give you exact answer. There is no there is no best way. It is combination of options uh, driven by certain clinical conditions. We have multiple options. Uh, I prefer to do more conservative types of restoration. So I think that I would do probably I would do uh, overlay maybe with deep marginal elevation. I don't know what is the case. Or maybe crown, it depends. So overlay or crown, these are two options that I will um, put into the, into the corner to make a decision. Okay, Saudi Arabia is here, nice. Uh, let's go. Hi Siri, is there any online module for com complete tooth preparation for interior, posterior, crowns, inlays, overlays? Um, we don't have this online course, let's say. We have online master classes. We have a very big group of online master classes about veneer preps. We do also have online master class about overlay, inlay, and veneer lay preps. Now we will have next, uh, this month actually, it will be 20, I think 26 of, let me just, just check, uh, 27th. Uh, it will be 27th July, uh, January. 27th January. Preparation for full crowns, anterior teeth, that will be very soon. And by the way, we still have early bird registration until January 13, so you have possibility to sign up with uh, with small discount. But the whole f whole process from A to Z, all different types of preparations in one shot, in one row, we don't have. We have hands-on course, which is uh, module one, mastering tooth preparation. Let me just show you where you can find it. If you will go to our webpage, which is en.belgrad.com. It is English version, and all these courses are in English language. Here you can see module courses, mastering tooth preparations for veneers, crowns, onlays, two days, from morning to late evening. All teeth we prep. We do crazy amount of preparations. And then the, you can see dates here. It will be in February, 6th, 7th, and then it will be repeated in April because these courses are very uh, popular and they booked shortly. That's why we, we see that we, we put some new dates also. So be, be our guest here and you'll be able to learn in the in best way, in hands-on way. Okay, let's go. Uh, how to master, the question is, how to master indirect vision working with mirror? You have to learn this. Come, hands on. We will teach you how to work with mirror. 
During this online masterclass about crowns, I will use mirror for preparation and I will explain you how do I use mirror uh, and give you tips and tricks and that may help you also to become better. But if you would like to, uh, to have some very simple tricks how to master working with mirror, uh, start to do very simple procedures with mirror. For example, dental hygiene. You can do some cleaning with mirror and as uh, more you work with mirror, uh, faster you will learn how to work with mirror with uh, different, uh, different procedures. Uh, okay, next. I usually find difficulties in places Rabidam or Matrix application in deep margins. Can you please tell me how to overcome such difficulty? There is no one receipt how to place Rabinam in deep margins and to pl place metrics. There is a very, um, there are many different combinations of methods and options that we have to choose. First, active clamps, Teflon tape. Stabilization of clamps sometimes, sometimes split down, sometimes gingivectomy, sometimes we have to do crown lengthening before, sometimes we have to do uh, orthodontic extrusion before. So there are many different clinical cases and conditions and there is no one way, best way to do rubbing M isolation and then to put these metrics. So you have to combine that, that kind of procedures and to choose the proper one in exact clinical case. Uh, let's go next. Let's go next. I usually find difficulties. Okay, I, I yeah. Martin says same gingivectomy, gingivectomy. See, is it necessary to? deactivate MMPs after etching dentin. These things like uh, MMP, uh, it exists, MMP exists till human is alive. So all our life it exists. So once you etch, then you may deactivate it with chlorhexidine, but then after short period of time it will be active again. So nowadays it is not necessary to deactivate MMPs with chlorhexidine because they will be active very soon again. So that's it. Not necessary. Uh, Dr. Belgrad is a great doctor. Thank you. Okay. How do you make Another question is, how do you make use of air, air rotas compared to speed increasing handpiece? What is better for different situations? Okay, so if the question is about air turbine or air driven handpieces and electric ones. Electric is 1000% better. Electric motor and increasing handpiece our best friends for smooth preparation because you can control speed and it is with torque so it does not rely on air pressure in your system the way which is very good for stable rotations and for stable preparations and also electric motors and that kind of hand pieces are pretty safe. They are safer than turbines. Okay, next question is Dobry vecher, Jal Dobry vecher, Jal ni na Ruskam. Na Ruskam bila včera paltara chesa. Vy praspali na jena, da? Question about using chlorgexidine during restoration. Some doctors use it before etching, some after before adhesive, some don't use it at all, meaning that phosphoric acid is good antiseptic. Uh, Marie, again, uh, you can use chlorhexidine before etching, like just for disinfection, but yes, um, 
etching um, gel, phosphoric acid, is also pretty good antiseptic by itself. Uh, so, if I do use total edge, total edge adhesive system, I will not use chlorhexidine either before etching and also after etching before bonding. I don't. But if I would use, for example, self-etch adhesive, in this case, maybe I would use chlorhexidine before adhesive procedure just for disinfection, just for that. And that's it. Greetings from Colombia. Gandara Prum. Hello from Ukraine. I'm wondering about the concentration, concentration of glycerin gel used in composite restoration. Could you recommend the ideal concentration of glycerin gel, please? I don't know about concentration. I can say about consistency. The glycerin gel you can buy from, uh, from the uh, medical store, for example. It's like KY gel or gel that, that uh, is used for sonography. Okay? And I prefer to have it uh, to have it uh, stiff, to have it more, not fluid, let's say, it has to be like a real gel. So in this case, it will be easier to work with this gel. So make it simple, just buy the gel. Gel for sonography is one of, of the best from my point of view. How can we treat an external resorption tooth caused by ortho treatment? Yeah, that is difficult. Uh, I think that is combination of surgical treatments. Surgical treatments and sometimes it not, not always possible to make proper treatment of external resorption. This depends on the, the depth of that resorption. How strong are all zirconia bridges? Let's say three units to eight unit. Look, eight unit is too much. Uh, three units, very good. It depends on type of zirconia because we have different types of zirconia. We have different strength of zirconia. Okay, and uh, the easiest way to answer that question is to read manufacturer's recommendation. If they say that you can do four units bridge with that zirconia, you can. If not, don't compromise. How do you manage when preparation for crown on lower posterior teeth at lingual area? Uh, patient head position, dentist position, tongue management and mirror. Very nice. So when you have, I prefer to work on 12 o'clock. But also I can, can work from 10, let's say 10 o'clock, 11, 12 and 1. Okay, that is my position. As for tongue. Uh, you can secure tongue with suction system and work with electric motor and increasing handpiece. In this case, it is more safe, okay, on both sides, left and right. Or in some cases, when we have, we, sometimes we have that type of patients that uh, literally fight with us. The tongue of this patient literally fights with us and we try to stabilize the tongue with a suction, with mirror, with fingers, whatever, and it, it is so strong that sometimes we are giving up. So basically, in this case, you can use a split dam, for example, for preparations. This is the, this is the thing. Uh, okay, next question is, I just graduated and I want to become a specialist in the prostodontics, but I don't have the experience yet. What kind of education and books would you recommend to me as an early post graduation? I bought a course from Online Academy and I'm looking forward to the others, but how do I master train and learn more about PFM, zirconia, full crowns, preparations and everything? 
because the educational system in my country gave us all materials and information to learn. Okay, that is a good question, by the way. And the good thing is now is that nowadays that actually we live in 21st century, the century of informational resources and internet. So in internet you may find tons of information about prosthetic dentistry. You can subscribe prosthetic, uh, the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry. You, if you want to be a specialist in prosthetic dentistry, sign up to the Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry first. Then, what kind of books can I recommend? There are many of them, tons of them. There, there are huge amount of magnificent books about prosthetic dentistry by Quintessence. Okay, you go, go to Quintessence Publishing and find the one that you like. There are many of them, to be honest. I even cannot say which one is better. I love books from, from Mauro Fridiani. There are two books about prosthetic dentistry, about aesthetics and full mouth rehab uh, procedures. So the author of the book is Mauro Fridiani, Aesthetic Analyzes and Full Mouth Rehab is the name of the book. There are very good books about porcelain veneers. There are very good books about uh, aesthetic dentistry from Douglas uh, Terry, for example. The name of the book is Aesthetic Dentistry. And you may find a lot of information about prosthetics and restorative components of treatments, tons of them. Also, uh, now we have a lot of videos available on YouTube, on our channel, you, we have a lot of videos. We have online masterclasses about that. Uh, so you can, you can start with that. And then if you would like to become good, not just in theory, but in practice, hands-on course. I'm not advertising my hands-on courses right now because I do hands-on courses for sure, but the, what I can share f with you my philosophy because I have some experience in dentistry and in life and 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 more elder you become the more respect of time you will have so basically I don't want to waste my time and I want and I can say once you are young and you have a lot of free time you don't have your family you don't have kids or whatever you can learn a lot by yourself, reading books, reading articles, uh, getting some videos, webinars or whatever. Then it may take time, a lot of time, okay? But there is a, a shortcut, there is a shortest way. The shortest way is to attend course, any course, okay? But you have to find a good one. Because when you go to the specific course, you will get pros and cons. So you will get concentration of useful, practical information that you still can learn by yourself, but it may take a long time. But in this case, you pay and you get concentration, full package, you get it, and then you go faster to improvement. This is, this is life. This is how it works, not just in dentistry, by the way but also in different, uh, in different sides of our life. Okay, how do you record occlusion for indirect for the lab to minimize adjustment? It's a, it's a big question because we work in a certain occlusal concept and we do phase bow registration, cinematic phase bow, we analyze, we do cephalometric analysis, we do uh, axiographic analysis, we have this data about patient uh, joints, patient occlusion, we do also occlusograms, we define um, position of the jaw, where we want to do our full mouth rehab, then we do sometimes splint, sometimes not. We do preps, we have our long-term provisionals, and then we transfer these ones into the final. It's, it's, a long, it's a long process, I cannot give you a very short answer. How do we do that? Uh, maybe in nearest future we will make some clinical case review about full mass rehab cases when I will be explaining some steps. Let us see. 
what would be the best treatment plan for fractured upper forced molar tooth with fractured segment extending 5 to 6 mm before uh, gingival margin after removing fractured segment on palatal side? It's a difficult question. There is no best way. There are many options. You can take out the root, palatal root, and keep the buccal ones, so there will be some kind of amputation. Still can work, by the way. Still can work. I have no experience with that, but I saw some cases with that approach, and I was amazed. Then uh, what we can also do is uh, the BOPT. In some cases, it may also work. I don't know how. I don't have experience with that. Uh, but it may work. Then another option is you can do orthodontic extrusion sometimes, but in this case when you work on upper uh, four smaller there is a big risk to expose furcation which is not a good um, a good uh, ending up. And then you can do also extraction and putting implant there. Maybe this option is the good one, maybe. Um, Okay, what is the shrinkage when it comes to dual cure build-up composite? Cured chemically for three, two minutes and then light cure versus normal light cure composite for direct restoration is chemical lower. Uh, interesting question, by the way. I cannot give you exact numbers and information because I actually I don't know. You have to read about that in... Uh, in um, in manufacturers guidelines about uh, shrinkage and then you may compare but what I what I what I know that shrinkage of chemical shrinkage not because of light curing but chemical shrinkage goes towards floor and walls okay and when you do light curing shrinkage goes towards adhesive surface but slightly inside, okay? So there is a different direction of shrinkage as far as I understand, as I learned from, uh, from I don't even know from where I learned that. So when you have the chemical uh, polymerization, the shrinkage goes towards walls and floor. When you have light curing, shrinkage goes towards adhesive surface, but also inside. That, that's it. When did you study? Where did you study? Uh, I graduated in Ukraine in uh, Poltava Medical University. When exactly the vertical prep approach is indicated? Uh, you may ask this question to other people because I'm not following vertical preparations yet, so I cannot give you exact answer for this question. What is the capital <laughs> of Great Britain? <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, uh, and I get up also in the 7 o'clock in the morning. So let us see some questions from, from Facebook also. Uh, in zirconic round prep, do you prep supra gingival or the ling on the lingual side? Yes, for sure. When I do zirconic round preparations, I do prep supra gingival on the lingual side. Basically, we don't need to go supra sub gingival here. Nice stone island jacket. Thank you, uh, Bruno Sebra Maxim. Hi, Maxim. Regards from Portugal. The best, Bruno. Hello. Miss you, my friend. How are you? How is how is life? How is this COVID shit in Portugal now? We know Bruno. We 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 organized course in in uh, Portugal together. It was nice in Lisbon. The uh, the the conference. Can you simplify chamfer and shoulder preparation? All the best. I want to know about zirconian cementation protocol. I answered that question. Uh, okay. Thanks for your answer, admire your work, thank you. Hello, Maxim, thanks for your webinars. You are an awesome practitioner and teacher. Can you give any tips and tricks about digital impression, any specific retraction protocol for digital? Thanks a lot. A lot. Karina, thank you for your kind words. Regarding digital impressions, 
Yes, there is a, there is a di little difference uh, between analog impression and digital impression in terms of retraction because when you do conventional impression you still have some pressure and light body material can go into the tiny surfaces. If you do scanning, if you do scan, uh, you have to expose margins to see because scanner has to see what to scan. Okay, so in this case, maybe uh, the, not maybe, the retraction is a little bit more aggressive, M maybe a little bit more thicker retraction cord, maybe a little bit impregnated uh, retraction cord. Sometimes we do slight, ve with very thin, super thin tip electrosurgery around the margin just to expose them better. So there, has, there are some combination of tricks there. Okay, uh, another question from Karina. If the gingiva start, if the gingiva starts to bleed during uh, during cementation, or worst, during excess removal, what can we how what can we manage that? So when if you cement right and you have bleeding, the rubidem isolation first. Rubidem isolation solves the problem. If you decide to go without rubidem isolation, you have to be 200% sure that there is no bleeding. So you have to prepare patient's soft tissues before the, the re mouthwash contain chlorhexidine one day pre or cementation appointment may make a ginger a little bit more dry than uh, good provisional restoration also have to be placed and it gives also very nice uh, soft tissue conditions. Then uh, in some cases we do use retraction cords, depends on uh, where is the margin. We use retraction cords and sometimes we still have some soft, very soft gingiva which may bleed when you touch it. So I put retraction cord and then I fill everything with a hemostatic gel, for example viscostat clear. Okay, we keep it for five minutes, then we rinse it, wash, and everything is dry there. And then I do cementation and everything should be fine. But then when you remove excess with sharp instruments, gingiva may bleed. So before cementing another crown, you have to stop bleeding here. So again, a hemostatic liquid like um, viscostate may help you to solve that problem. Uh, okay, what's your opinion about bulk composites regarding from Mexico? I'm pretty okay with bulk composites. I use them in my practice for some cases. What is the best technique or way to remove the old veneers? Uh, Airbium laser works very nice and efficient. If you don't have it, you have to drill your veneers out with diamond burrs. Best way how to deal with cracks, especially cracks from amalgam. Um, why are you asking about best ways? In dentistry, the, there is only best way in dentistry. Is what is, uh, the best way in dentistry if prof is prophylaxis. This is the best. The rest are compromises. Okay, so it depends on the depth of the crack, the um, actually the length, and length and the depth of the crack. So uh, in cracks cases, I prefer to do cusp coverage, cusp reduction with some overlaying. Maybe I will put there my finish lines more to the buckle and more to the, the lingual. If we have this, you know, this mesial distal crack. In this case, I would do some sort of semi-crown uh, restoration for that kind of cases. But it depends also uh, depends on the thickness of the walls. It depends. Um, okay. Okay. Um, very good. How apical? How apical? Gogging is important how to do it in the best way. I didn't get the question. When restoration margin is super sub gingival. Okay. How do you choose between deep margin elevation, surgical crown lengthening 
or orthodontic extrusion. Thank you. Okay, tons. Everything depends on the level of your um, defect and basically also corresponding to the bone level. So if you have the subgingival defect that is above bone level, in this case we do gingivectomy and then we can do uh, deep marginal elevation or in some cases even I can keep my preparations in the south two structures and then I do impressions and whatever. But if your um, defect is bone level or even below bone level, in this case we will do crown lengthening or uh, orthodontic extrusion or implant even. Okay? My friends, we are done with more than one hour live uh, Q&A session. I think it was very uh, dynamic and I, I, I almost answered all of your questions. Yeah, the last question by, uh, by Dr. Ken, any advice for the final year dental student? Uh, wow, final year dental student. Yes, uh, there is an advice. Uh, I don't know if you love dentistry already or not. But if you would like to progress in dentistry, because you choose that discipline, dentistry, if you would like to progress in dentistry, first you have to love dentistry, then you have to be very motivated and crazy about new techniques and new knowledge. And then, my friend, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, you have to work as slave, then you will be able to become good specialist. Uh, practical advice, since you are young, you are a student, you have time, use this time efficiently for learning. Read articles, read dental books, watch webinars, watch videos, absorb information as much as you can now absorb this re information even if you don't understand something just absorb 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 it and then later on you'll be able to filter that information and then you'll be able to find out which one is good which one is not but you will be prepared theoretically before you will start your practice this is advice for uh, for students Okay, good. Dentistry is my life. When I spend the most of my time at my office, more than I do at home. It's good from one side to become a good specialist if you spend more time in dental office than in, in, your, in your home, for example. From, it, it is good for some sort of periods, let's say when you invest this time to become a good specialist. But once then you have family, you have kids, and you have to keep balance. Because our life, at the end of the day, of our life is not about dentistry, not only about dentistry, not only about profession. Profession is the big part of our life, but also our family, our kids, our hobbies and whatever. We're humans, we have to live good life, not just to work. Despite the fact that maybe you enjoy when you work but you have to enjoy also dif different other as aspects of our life. Um, okay, my friends, I would like to thank everybody to be with us these days, uh, to follow us on our social medias, uh, to spend your time with our educational resources. We are keeping on. Uh, we are going to share more and more content on YouTube or Instagram or in, uh, in Facebook. I would like to wish you to be healthy these days. I would like to wish you to be wealthy. I would like to wish you good luck because good luck is very necessary for everybody, especially uh, during this interesting time that we live. Learn, love, what you do, 
and uh, be good specialists for your patients. My friends, may the dental force be with you and see you next time. Bye-bye.